Hi there. This is Walt Jakewith, Applications Expert with Imaginet Technologies and Certified Inventor Professional. In this video, I'm going to look at Autodesk's new sheet metal nesting utility for Inventor, which was introduced with the release of Inventor 2019. This module is included with the product design collections. It is closely integrated with Inventor's sheet metal tools, although it also works with information from other sources as well. Let's jump right in. There are a couple ways to initiate a nesting file. In Inventor, a nesting tab appears when there are no documents open. Selecting Nesting will start a new nesting file. If you already have documents open, you can do the same thing by selecting New and choosing the nesting template. The nesting utility adds a new type of template to the template list. It has an iNest file extension and acts just like other Inventor template files. The nesting functionality is contained in the separate iNest files, similar to the way that Inventor's presentation files are handled. The main function of the template file is to hold data concerning what the utility calls packaging. This is information regarding the metal plates that are used to cut the parts what materials, what sheet sizes, whether the sheet has a grain, and if it has treated and untreated sides. All the things concerning the actual sheets which must be accounted for when deciding how to fit a shape for cutting. There are three ways to get this information into the nesting tool. First, it can be created directly in the utility itself. This is useful if you're dealing with flat patterns which don't originate in Inventor or AutoCAD. Second, they can be created in the nesting tool but based on materials from Inventor. This works well for populating the template file if the materials and gauges you commonly use are already set up in your CAD application. Finally, if a project is imported from Inventor with a material that isn't already mapped, the tool offers to create a material in the nesting tool and map it. In all cases, you will need to define sheet sizes in the nesting tool. Additionally, there's a handful of general application options and a tool for coordinating the sources of external data, for instance, the material settings from an inventor sheet metal part. Now that I have a nesting file open, the next thing to do is to choose a source or sources. The source can be any inventor part or assembly files you need to nest, as well as DXF files from other sources for the flat patterns. I'll look at inventor files first. The key to success with the nesting utility is to have everything properly set up in inventor before you nest. Creating a sheet metal flat pattern for the part is necessary even if it has no bends in it. Having your sheet metal rules correctly assigned and your flat patterns created and oriented before you start the nest will ensure that things go smoothly. If something from the part file isn't right, you'll have to go back and fix it, then update the data in the nesting utility. My test assembly for this demo is an assembly model of a CNC burn table. All of the sheet metal parts are 8 gauge steel. I've created flat patterns for each one and align them correctly in Inventor. The way the flat pattern looks in Inventor when you call it up is how it will import into the nesting utility. So as I said, it's good to get this correct before you nest. Back in the nesting utility, I'm going to select Sources and then Add. I'll then browse to the top level burn table assembly. The utility will examine the part files, disregarding any which don't have a flat pattern associated with them. Once the list is populated, I can check the error log to see which files it isn't using. In this case, I know that those are parts in the assembly which are not sheet metal parts, so I'm fine. I'll select OK and the flat patterns are imported and lined up in a row. They can be color matched according to their sheet parameters, although in this case they're all the same gauge and material, so they're all one color. This is a chance to pan across the profiles and make sure everything looks right. 
If the parts need to be oriented a certain way in relation to the metal's grain, they should be in that orientation at this point. If corrections are needed, I can open the part in Inventor and make any changes to the flat pattern or its alignment. Once I've done that, I can switch back to nesting. The utility knows which parts have changed, and when I redo the extract, it updates my information. In addition to the original orientation, I can set parameters for each part to tell the nesting tool what orientations are allowed. From the Nesting Properties dialog box, we can see that by default all the parts come in constrained orthogonally, allowing any 90 degree rotation, but with no deviation from those allowables. I can restrict a part from being rotated or flipped, and add an allowable deviation from the orthogonal orientation. Once everything looks good, I can create the nesting study using the Create tool. This gives a final chance to verify the parts I want to include. I can also select the job count and check the sheet size or sizes I want to use. Finally, I can prioritize the efficiency for the type of remnant I want. I'll click OK, and the job will process. There are a couple indicators at the bottom of the browser to show that the job is processing. And it's done. The nesting study is placed below the row of parts. Because the sheet metal parts in this project were all of the same material, there's just a single set of sheets for the nesting study. If I were using different materials, they would be separated and can be color-coded. Now that I have the nesting study, if I'm happy with it, I can select the sheets and export them to DXF files. However, I might want to tweak my settings and run a second study. In this case, I notice that these leg parts are oriented at 90 degrees to the sheet. Those parts have a bend up the middle, and while the current nest is efficient, I'd rather not make that long bend against the metal's grain. From the Nesting Properties dialog box, I can uncheck the 90 and 270 degree options for those parts. They will now be forced into a horizontal orientation in the nest. With that change made, I can create a second nesting study. Inventor will calculate the new nest and position it below the original. The second configuration is not as compact as the first, but the difference is not huge. I can select which I want to use and delete the other, or change my parameters again and run a third study. For using parts which don't come from Inventor, I can bring in DXF files from AutoCAD or some other source. In my testing, I found that the nesting tool complained if the imported file wasn't pretty clean. For this example, I purged everything from the file except the profile I wanted, and it worked. Your profile should be closed polylines. From the Add Sources dialog box, I can add as many files as I need. Each will need to get a material assigned. In this case, I'll assign two different materials to show what that does. I'll also set quantities for the parts since there's no assembly to supply that information. I can switch the display to show color by material. Now when I run the nesting study, the tool separates the parts into separate rows by their materials.
As before, I can right click on the sheets in the browser and export each sheet to a DXF file to feed my CNC cutter. That's a quick look at Inventor's new nesting tool. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm Walt Jakewith for Imaginet Technologies. See you next time, and happy modeling.